We just really appreciate you all being here tonight. This is such a fun event and these um, students have worked really, really hard to get here and I really want to congratulate them all. Um, I'm hoping there are absolutely no nerves in the room on that side of the room, right? <laughs> Um, Jody, would you just step in here for a moment? Jody, Jody coordinates our art show program, and this, um, of course, couldn't happen without you. So thank you, Jody, for your work. So this evening uh, would not be possible without our judges. And I'm looking at this panel here, and they volunteer their time to be here. And it's kind of a, an, an intense job. So thank you for being here. And I'm um, going to introduce each of them to you. And Christopher, you go, I'll introduce you first. Would you just stand up and say hello to the audience? This is Christopher Luna. So Christopher, uh, during his five years as Clark County's first poet laureate, Christopher established a Poets in the Schools program. And we have information, I understand, about that program that we're hoping teachers will take a look at. So it's a, a great program. He is the co-host of um, the Ghost Town Poetry Open Mic, now in its 14th year. So Luna and his wife, the poet, Tony Partington, co-founded Printed Matter Vancouver. And that's a local small press that provides editing services and writing coaching for Northwest writers. He's the author of several books as well. I had a whole list of them I was going to read, but lots and lots of books. And you know, I just want to say to you, thank you so much for being here year after year. He, uh, volunteers his time. I know he's passionate about poetry and about this program, so thanks for being here. So I would also like to introduce Michelle Larson. Michelle, would you stand up and say hello to the audience? Michelle is the communications manager for ESD 112, and um, I love her bio, and I'm just going to read it as it is because um, she has a longtime love affair with the beauty and power of words. Michelle chaired the poetry anthology as a senior at Colorado Mesa University. She won't say how long ago that was, unfortunately, um, where she earned her degree in English literature. She founded the Positive Thought nonprofit, The Joy Team, in 2010 and has been spreading joy ever since. Many of you might have seen the big, the big yellow happy billboards around town. That's Michelle's nonprofit. She is dedicated to children and their education. She's been volunteering at Hauk Elementary for a decade, and she leads a junior joy team group there at Hauk every month. So Michelle, thanks for being here. So we also have Donna Roberge. Donna, would you would you stand and say hello? <laughs> Donna is a past chairwoman and charter member of the Clark County Arts Commission. She is recognized as one of the region's founding women. She is Professor Emeritus of Sociology at Clark College, where she taught for 15 years. And we're so happy that you're here. Thanks so much for volunteering your time to be here. So we also have Catherine Livick. Catherine is on the end. Catherine is our accuracy judge. So you will see her nose to the grindstone tonight, really um, making sure that the students are accurate in their um, poetry um, recitation. So Catherine still thinks of herself as a middle school teacher, but she's currently the professional development manager for digital learning here at ESD 112. She develops curriculum for teacher professional development around technology and acts as a technology coach and consultant, helping teachers integrate technology in school districts around the region. She also said she has quite a number of opinions about coffee, Star Trek, and plants. <laughs> so thank you for being here, Catherine. We appreciate it. So before we get started, I just want to tell you a little bit about tonight's competition. Um, we're going to be scoring, the judges are going to be scoring on several criteria and each is very, very important. Physical presence, voice and articulation, dramatic appropriateness, evidence of understanding, overall performance, 
and accuracy of recitation. So each student is going to recite two poems tonight. So we're going to have two rounds and we're going to take a short break in between and we certainly hope we got lots of cookies and bottles of water so please especially at break time we hope you'll you'll dive into those um, when we conclude with two rounds um, we will announce the two winners who will be going to the state competition in Tacoma and that happens on March 10th so um, we're going to begin the competition and just go in order of the program. So first we would like Emma Bush to come up from Vancouver School of Arts and Academics. Time Does Not Bring Relief, You All Have Lied by Edna St. Vincent Millay. Time does not bring relief. You all have lied who told me time would ease me of my pain. I miss him in the weeping of the rain. I want him at the shrinking of the tide. The old snows melt from every mountainside, and last year's leaves are smoke in every lane. But last year's bitter loving must remain heaped on my heart and my old thoughts abide. There are a hundred places where I fear to go, so with his memory they brim. And entering with relief, some quiet place where never fell his foot or shone his face, I say, there is no memory of him here. And so stand stricken, so remembering him. Rhiannon Evans from Trout Lake School. I am trying to break your heart by Kevin Young. I'm hoping to hang your head on my wall in shame. The slightest taxidermy thrills me. Fish forever leaping on a living room wall. Paperweights made from skulls of small animals. I want to wear your smile on my sleeve and break your heart like a horse or its leg. Weeks of being bucked off, then all at once, you're mine. Put me down. I want to call you thine, to tattoo mercy along my knuckles. I assassin down the avenue. I hope to have you forgotten by noon. To know you by your knees, pulse seed by prayer. Loneliness is a science. Consider the taxidermist's tender hands trying to keep from losing skin the bobcat grin of the living. Okay, and next we have Sandra Fashul from Battleground High School. Mr. Darcy by Victoria Chang. In the end, she just wanted the house. And a horse, not much more. What if he didn't own the house? Or worse, not even a horse. How do we separate the things from a man, the man from the things? Is a man still the same without his reins? Here, it rains every 15 minutes. It would be foolish to marry a man without an umbrella. Did Cinderella really love the prince, or just the prince on the curtain in the ballroom? Once, I went window shopping, but I didn't want a window when do you know it is time to get a new man, one who can win more things at the fair. I already have four stuffed pandas. I won from the fair, fair, and square. Is it time to be less square, to wear something more revealing 
In North and South, she does the dealing, gives him the money in the end, but she falls in love with him when he has the money, when he is still running away. If the water is running in the other room, is it wrong for me to not want to chase it because it owns nothing else? When I wave to a man, I love what happens when another man with a lot more bags waves back. Okay, Meg Fritz from Stevenson High School. Elegy on Toy Piano by Dean Young for Kenneth Coach. You don't need a pony to connect you to the unseeable or an airplane to connect you to the sky. Necessary it is to love to live, and there are many manuals, but in all important ways, one is on one's own. You need not cut off your hand, no need to eat a bouquet. Your head becomes a peach pit, your tongue a honeycomb. Necessary it is to live to love, to charge into the burning tower, then charge back out, and necessary it is to die. Even for the trees, even for the pony connecting you to what can't be grasped. The injured gazelle falls behind the herd, one last wild enjabment. Because of the sores in his mouth, the great poet struggles with a dumpling. His work has enlarged the world, but the world is about to stop, including him. He is the tower the world runs out of. When something becomes ash, there is nothing you can do to turn it back. About this, even diamonds do not lie. Okay, and next we welcome Isaac Liu from Cedar Tree Classical Christian School. The Glories of Our Blood and State by James Shirley. The glories of our blood and state are shadows, not substantial things. There is no armor against fate. Death lays his icy hand on kings. Scepter and crown must tumble down, and in the dust be equal made with the poor crooked scythe and spade. Some men with swords may reap the field and plant fresh laurels where they kill, but their strong nerves at last must yield. They tame but one another still. Early or late, they stoop to fate and must give up their breath when they, pale captives, creep to death. The garlands wither on your brow, then boast no more your mighty deeds. Upon death's purple altar now see where the victor victim bleeds. Your heads must come to the cold tomb. Only the actions of the just smell sweet and blossom in their dust. Okay, Alea Mays from Camus High School. Mrs. Caldera's House of Things by Gregory Janikian. You are sitting in Mrs. Caldera's kitchen. You are sipping a glass of lemonade and trying not to be too curious about the box of plastic hummingbirds behind you, the tray of timeless forks at your elbow. 
You have heard about the back room where no one else has ever gone, and whatever enters remains, refrigerator doors, fuse coils, mower blades, milk bottles, pistons, gears. You never know, she says, rummaging through a cedar chest of recipes, when something will come of use. There is a vase of pencil tips on the table, a bowl full of miniature wheels and axles upstairs where her children slept. The doors will not close. The stacks of magazines are burgeoning. There are snowshoes and lampshades, bed springs and picture tubes and boxes and boxes of irreducibles. You imagine the headline in the Literalist Express, house founders under weight of past. But Mrs. Caldera is baking cookies. She is humming a song from childhood. Her arms are heavy and strong. They have held babies, a husband, tractor parts, and gas tanks. What have they not found a place for? It is getting dark. You have sat for a long time. If you move, you feel something will be disturbed. There is room enough only for your body. Stay a while, Mrs. Caldera says. And never have you felt so valuable. Thank you. Okay, we, next we have Grace Melbier from Ridgefield High School. Quite frankly, by Mark Holiday. They got old. They got old and tied. But first, Okay, but first they compose plangent depictions of how much they lost and how much cared about losing. Meantime, their hair got thin and more thin as their shoulders went slumpy. Okay, but not before the photo albums got arranged by them. Arranged with a niftiness, not just two or three, but 18 photo albums, yes, 18 eventually, 18 albums proving the beauty of them and not someone else. Them and their relations and friends, incontrovertible. <laughs> Playing croquet in that Bloomington yard, floating on those comic inflatables at Dow Lake, giggling at the Dairy Queen, waltzing at the wedding, building a Lego palace on the porch, holding the baby beside the rental truck, leaning on the Hemingway statue at Pamplona, discussing the eternity of art in that Sardinian restaurant, yes! And so quite frankly, at the end of the day, they got old and died, okay, sure. But quite frankly, how much does that matter in view of the 18 photo albums, big ones, 13 inches by 12 inches, each full of such undeniable beauty? Okay, and our last um, performer of this round will be Lainey Pham from Battleground High School. Beautiful Wreckage by W.D. Earhart. What if I didn't shoot the old lady running away from our patrol. Or the old man in the back of the head. Or the boy in the marketplace. Or what if the boy, but he didn't have a grenade. And the woman in Hue didn't lie in the rain in a mortar pit with seven Marines just for food. Gaffney didn't get hit in the knee. Ames didn't die in the river. Ski didn't die in a medevac chopper between Gong Thieng and Da Nang. In Vietnamese, Gong Thieng means place 
of angels. What if it really was, instead of the place of rotting sandbags, incoming heavy artillery, rats, and mud? What if the angels were Ames and Ski? Or the lady, the man, and the boy, and they lifted Gaffney out of the mud and healed his shattered knee? What if none of it happened the way I said? Would it all be a lie? Would the wreckage be suddenly beautiful? Would the dead rise up and walk? Well, that concludes round one. How about we give these students a big round of applause? Well, we're going to go now in reverse alpha order, which means the young lady that you just heard from will be right back up doing um, her poem, uh, Lainey Pham from Battleground High School. <coughs> Movement Song by Audre Lorde. I have studied the tight curls on the back of your neck. Moving away from me, beyond anger or failure, your face in the evening schools of longing through mornings of wish and ripen. We were always saying goodbye in the blood, in the bone, over coffee, before dashing for elevators, going in opposite directions without goodbyes. Do not remember me as a bridge, nor a roof, as the maker of legends, nor as a trapdoor to that world where black and white clericals hang on the edge of beauty in five o'clock elevators, twitching their shoulders to avoid other flesh. And now, there is someone to speak for them through mornings of wish and ripen. Line. Your goodbye. Your goodbye is a promise of lightning in the last angel's hand unwelcome and warning. The sands have run out against us. We were rewarded by journeys away from each other, into desire, into mornings alone, where excuse and endurance mingle conceiving decision. Do not remember me as disaster, nor as the keeper of secrets. I am a fellow rider in the cattle cars, watching you move slowly out of my bed, saying, we cannot waste time only ourselves. Okay, and now um, for her second poem, Ridgefield High School's Grace Melbier. Dear Reader by Rita May Reese, you've forgotten it all. 
You've forgotten your name, where you lived, who you loved. Why? I am simply your nurse, terse and unlovely. I point to things and remind you what they are. Chair, book, daughter, soup. And when we are alone, I tell you what lies in each direction. This way is death. And this way, after a longer walk, is death. And that way is death. But you won't see it until it is right in front of you. Once after your niece had been to visit you, and I said something about how you must love her, or she must love you, or something useless like that, you gripped my forearm in your terrible, swift hand and said, she is everything. You gave me a shake. Everything to me. And then you fall back into the well, deep into the well of everything, and I stand at the edge and call, chair, book, daughter, soup. Catherine, are you, are you good to go with the, OK, great. Um, <laughs> Um, and now Alea Mays for her second poem from Camas High School. Layabout by John Brem. Do nothing and everything will be done. That's what Mr. Lao Tzu said who walked around talking 2,500 years ago. And now, his books practically grow on trees, they're so popular. And if he were alive today, beautiful women would rush up to him like waves lapping at the shores of his wisdom. That's the way it is, I guess, humbling. But if I could just unclench my fists, empty out my eyes, turn my mind into a prayer flag for the wind to play with. We could be brothers. Him, the older one who's seen and not done it all, and me, still unlearning. Both of us slung low in our hammocks. Our hats tipped forwards, hands folded neatly like bamboo huts above our hearts. Thank you. Okay, and now we have Isaac Liu from Cedar Tree Classical Christian School. A thank you note by Michael Ryan for John Scoyles. My daughter made drawings with the pens you sent, line drawings that suggest the things they represent, different from any drawings she at ten had done. Closer to real art, implying what the mind fills in. For her mother, she made a flower, fragile on its stem. For me, a lion, calm, contained, but not a handsome one. She drew a lion for me once before on a get well card and wrote, I must be brave even when it's hard. Such love is healing, as you know, my friend, especially when it comes unbidden from our children, despite the flaws they see so vividly in us. Who can love you? your child 
does. Your son, so ill. The brutal chemo, his looming loss, owning you now. Yet, you would be this generous to think of my child. With the pens you sent, she has made, I hope, a healing instrument. Okay, I'm from Stevenson High School, Meg Fritz. Abandoned Farmhouse by Ted Kuser. He was a big man, says the size of his shoes on a pile of broken dishes by the house. And a tall man too says the length of the bed in an upstairs room. And a good, God-fearing man, says the Bible with a broken back, on the floor below the window, dusty with sun. But not a man for farming, says the fields, cluttered with boulders and the leaky barn. A woman lived with him, says the bedroom wall, papered with lilacs and the kitchen shelves covered in oilcloth. And they had a child, says a sandbox made from a tractor tire. Money was scarce, says the jars of plum preserves and canned tomatoes sealed in the cellar hole. And the winter's cold, say the rags in the window frames. It was lonely here, says the narrow country road. Something went wrong, says the empty house in the weed-choked yard. Stones in the field say he was not a farmer. The still sealed jars in the cellar say she left in a nervous haste. And the child? Its toys are strewn in the yard like branches after a storm. A rubber cow, a rusty tractor with a broken plow, a doll in overalls. Something went wrong, they say. Okay, uh, Sandra Fashul from Battleground High School. Late Summer by Jennifer Grotz. Before the moths have even appeared to orbit around them, the street lamps come on, a long row of them glowing uselessly along the ring of garden that circles the city center, where your steps count down the dulling of daylight. At your feet, a bee crawls in small circles like a toy, unwinding. Summer specializes in time, slows it down almost to dream. And the noisy day goes so quiet, you can hear the bedraggled man who visits each trash receptacle mutter in disbelief. Everything in the world is being thrown away. Summer lingers, but it's about ending. It's about how things redden and ripen and burst and come down. It's when the city workers cut down trees demolishing limb after limb, spilling the crumbs of twigs and leaves all over the tablecloth of street. Sunglasses, the man softly exclaims, while beside him blooms a large gray rose of pigeons huddled around a piece of dropped bread. Okay, and Rhiannon Evans from Trout Lake School.
Dyed Carnations by Robin Schiff. There's blue, and then there's blue. A number, not a hue. This blue is not the undertone of any one, but there it is, primary. I held the bouquet in shock and cut the stems at a deadly angle. I opened the toxic sachet of flower food with my canine and rinsed my mouth. I used to wash my hands and daydream. I dreamed of myself and washed my hands of everything. Easy math. Now I can't get their procedure at the florist off my mind. The white flowers arrived. They overnighted in a chemical bath, and now they have a fake laugh that catches like a match, that starts the kind of kitchen fire that is fanned by water. They won't even look at me. Happy anniversary. Okay, and our last performance by Emma Bush, Vancouver School of Arts and Academics. It is not by Valerie Martinez. We have the body of a woman in arch over the ground, but there is no danger. Her hair falls spine bowed, but no one is with her. The desert, yes, with its cacti, bursage, sidewinders. She is not in danger. If we notice, there are the tracks of animals moving east toward the sunrise, and the light is about to touch the woman's body without possession. Here, there are no girl's bones in the earth marked with violence. A collar blooms just two feet away. It blooms. There is a man like her father who wakes to a note saying, I have gone for a day to the desert. Now he knows she is in danger. He will try to anticipate what happens to a young woman, how it will happen, how he will deal with the terrible. In him, he feels he knows this somehow. He knows because there are men he knows who are capable. This place she has gone to, where? But it doesn't matter. There is first of all the heat which scorches, snakes with their coils and open mouths, men who go there with the very thing in mind. The very thing. It is the desert on its own. Miles beyond what anyone can see. Not peaceful nor vengeful. It does not bow down, it is not danger. I cannot speak of it without easing or troubling myself. It is not panorama nor theater. I do not know. It is conception. The gifts or burdens I bear, whether arch, a prayer, or danger, they can happen. Yes, we conceive them. This very woman I know, the man does sit tortured. The desert created merely embodies its place and watch us lay our visions, O oh God, upon it. Okay, and that concludes round two. Before we break um, for a moment, I would really love to have all the teachers who are here supporting their students stand for us so we can give you a round of applause. That's 
awesome that you're here. And thank you, too, to all the families who support these students. I was sitting over there thinking just about how much they have on their plates, just um, going to school and with studies, and just to take their time to do this activity as well is, is a lot. So one more big round of applause for our <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna break for 10 minutes and then we will come back and announce the two who scored uh, the highest in this competition. So we're actually going to announce the two students with the highest scores and I will tell you it was very close and our scorekeepers, would you, Susan and Jody, would you come out and let's give you a round of applause. Um, when I went back there, they were on their um, triple time checking the score, so they're very thorough. And um, so without further ado, I think I'll go ahead and announce the highest scores. These are in no um, certain order. And these are the students who will represent our region at the state competition. So very excited to announce um, one of the top scorers is Alea Mays from Camas High School. <laughs> All right. And our other top scorer tonight is Isaac Liu from Cedar Tree Christian School. Okay, feel free, please, thank you so much for coming, and feel free to stay and have more cookies, and um, thanks again for being here. <laughs>